Good morning, everyone. How are you all? Uh, welcome to East Bride. A very warm, warm welcome here, and let's hope the sun stays out for a wee while. So, at this election, the Greens are asking voters to think global, act local, and use your first preference vote for the Greens. As a candidate for the East Kilbride East Ward, just 16 minutes walk that way, I can tell you that more Green councillors is exactly what we need in this town. This was Scotland's first new town, which grew up after the war. As with many others, it was designed as overspill to deal with the greater Glasgow housing shortages. It was also built to serve the private car. But this is the 21st century, and the way we think about our towns and cities must change in Scotland. And with the Greens in government, it is changing. As someone who works on projects such as green spaces and cycle routes, I'm proud that we have Scottish Greens leading on nature recovery and active travel in this country. But now we need our councils to catch up. I'd like to see the influence we're gaining at national level reflected too at South Lanarkshire Council. That's why I'm enjoying canvassing, listening to and acting on local residents' concerns. It's shown me that we urgently need Greens in South Lanarkshire Council. For example, I'd like to see us make the best use of the biggest investment in recycling in a generation or the unprecedented investment in nature recovery. We're actually seeing that money falling, coming down to local level and things happening on the ground now. We're delivering these things in the Scottish Government and we need councillors to carry on that work here. Of course, both of those record investments are being delivered in a government by our co-leader, Lorna Slater. So please give Lorna a warm welcome. Thank you so much, Kirsten. I know that you will be a hard-working councillor for your community, and I wish you all the best for your campaign. We need people like Kirsten in our councils, people who are dedicated community activists, defenders of public transport and our green spaces. Kirsten worked hard alongside campaigners to get Hazelhead Play Park reinstated and won. Just imagine the impact she would have if she was elected. The Scottish Greens are standing more candidates in this election than at any other local authority election. Hundreds of community activists, like Kirsten, stand ready to make an impact in councils across the country, building on the impact we have already made in the councils we have councillors in and in government. In the Greens, we understand the deep connection between global concerns and community activism. Last week, the UN climate scientists gave their starkest warning yet, that we need to cut climate emissions fast. It's now or never, the co-chair of the working group, Jim Skia, said. The secretary general went further. He said that some governments and business leaders are saying one thing, but doing another. Simply put, he said, they are lying, and the results will be catastrophic. It is deeply disappointing that the UK government continues to say one thing, but do another. It's almost like they can't be trusted. The Prime Minister himself said that Putin has his hands on the taps of oil and gas, but that there is nothing he can do about North Sea wind. I would agree with that, but Johnson's actions speak louder than his words. He continues to subsidize North Sea oil expansion. He approves new oil fields like Cambo, and he's even been to Saudi Arabia to court fossil fuel import, imports from human rights abusers. With Greens in government in Scotland, we are taking a different path. We are investing to lower the carbon footprint from buildings and transport, and we are paving the way to massively increase our renewable energy capacity. With energy policy reserved, we need the UK government to get on board now. But this applies to local government too. Councils across Scotland need to prioritize traffic reduction, 20-minute neighborhoods, and public and active travel. 
We are in a climate and nature emergency, and many of the decisions that have, will have the most impact on the ground are made by councils. That's the reason we say, think global, act local. We need to get more greens into our councils, to bring vision for our communities that is fit for the 21st century, and to deliver it through better planning and services. But that can only happen if voters give the Scottish Greens their first preference vote. Second or third preferences will not get Greens elected, and our councils could stagnate under the old-style politics, which doesn't look at the bigger picture. That's why now is the time to think global, act local, and give the Scottish Greens your first preference vote on May 5th. Thank you. much, Lorna. The, uh, the manifesto that we're publishing today reflects the crucial role that our councils play in addressing the local impacts of both the climate crisis and the economic crisis. The pandemic over the last couple of years has shown us that global events do have a profound local impact, but it also shows the differences that communities can make when we work together, responding to those global challenges and taking local action. Over those last two years, in the face of a global crisis, we've seen some stellar examples of local community leadership, of people who do think global and act local. We've got to continue that spirit uh, and that cooperation to deal with the climate and economic crises as well. This manifesto details how Scottish Green councillors have led work in their communities uh, and on their councils to recognise the climate crisis and take action on it in ways that simply would not have happened if the councils had had no green voices. Now that has to change because over the coming five years, we're going to make decisions that are vital for our democracy and for our planet. Councils have got a responsibility to serve their communities in a sustainable way that builds a green recovery. And the Scottish Greens are committed to giving councils the power they need to do just that. That's why our work in Parliament has secured new local powers, as well as new money for council services from active travel and recycling to the biggest increase in teacher recruitment for 15 years. But make no mistake, all these improvements may have been brought about by Greens in government, but they will be delivered best locally by Greens in councils. Green councillors will fiercely defend local assets like parks, libraries, swimming pools, just as our existing councillors have done. They'll invest in walking, wheeling and cycling and roll out 20-minute neighbourhoods, making communities safe, healthy and welcoming for everyone. They'll put local people at the heart of decision-making instead of the interests of big developers. Green councillors will improve bus services and lead the case for rail reopenings. They'll enforce our ban on the worst single-use plastics and they'll make good use of the record levels of funding that we're providing for recycling. And they'll do these things not because a national policy says so, but because they passionately believe in the green vision for our communities in the power of thinking global and taking local action. But, of course, they can only do that if they get elected. Last year saw our best ever Holyrood result, and recent opinion polling has shown growing support for the Greens as well as for our role in government. At this election, we can build on this and change the face of local politics too, but only if you give us your first preference vote. That's why we're asking people to think global, act local, and vote green on May the 5th. Thank you.